I like it when I get applause. Hi, everybody. Um, Jim Halterman, West Coast Bureau Chief, TV Guide Magazine. Thanks for being here today. What did you think of the episode? Good stuff. I, li I like anything that has ghosts. When, I, when a ghost pops up, I'm always on board. Um, <laughs> get my notes here ready. Well, thanks for being here. Um, as you guys know, um, we're going we're gonna to talk about the episode. We're going to talk about filming this show. A lot of surprises that even I didn't know. Um, so let's bring out two of the actors. Lashana Lynch, who plays Rosalind Capul Capulet. And Medallion Rahimi, who plays Princess Isabella. Hello. Welcome. How are you Thank all doing? Thank you. Good. Good. How are you? You lot are all. <laughs> I just watched here. it. I know. What, what, I, I was, we all just watched it. I, I watched it earlier today. But what, what have you guys thought since you've watched it? Has this been like a great experience for you? Because the fact that yes. there's so much to went into. Talk about that. I know, there's so much to talk about. It's been epic, literally since the day we got the parts, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know about you, but I literally fell on the ground crying in public. So, <laughs> like, I feel like I've been, like, crying happy inside since I got it. It was wicked. We have great cast and crew. We were shooting in Spain for, like, four and a half months. Like, it's been gorgeous, the whole thing, right? Yeah. So... Not to spoiled. mention, the cast isn't uh, bad looking either. I mean, they're all right. <laughs> You could, <laughs> you could be stuck in Spain with worse looking people, right? I know, yeah. right? I know. It was a small town. All we had was each other, really. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like, she's not joking. Seriously, the only people that we had were each other. We'd go to, like, the same bars and the same clubs, and after, like, a month, it would be like, okay, so we're going back to that same restaurant. Great, okay, we're going back to that same. But it was gorgeous, and so we had an amazing, amazing time, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, we're going to dig deep into all that. Um, I want to know, first of all, the obvious first question. How familiar were you with the Romeo and Juliet story and Shakespeare and that whole world that you were kind of taking a spin off of? Well, in the UK, we study um, Romeo and Juliet. Actually, we did study Romeo and Juliet and Shakespeare in general at the age of like 14, 15, 16. Um, and then I went to drama school for three years and then had a brilliant time doing Shakespeare, like first and third year. You have to do, it's like, you have to do a, a Shakespeare play. Yes, yeah, a requirement. Um, and then... I think that my only Shakespeare play in my career has been Romeo and Juliet, actually, at the National Theatre in London, which is a huge theatre. Um, who did you play? Tibble, who's a boy. <laughs> who wasn't but a boy? That's the great thing about Shakespeare. Exactly. You can bend the rules. Any sex, any colour, any level of experience, and you can shift, sh like, shift anything you like, and, yeah, it's been wonderful. So I have a little bit of experience with it. A little, little bit. How about you, Medallion? We did the play. I mean, we I've read a bunch of his plays, and we did uh, Romeo and Juliet when I was in, like, seventh grade, and I played Lady Capulet. Sure. Right? Yes. <laughs> of course you did. Of course you yeah, did, though, right? Really Powerhouse. Okay, cool. Well, I know from, from my old college, and I, I was an acting major for a while, nice. reading Shakespeare and acting Shakespeare are different things, I thought. Because I thought once you act it, it kind of all clicked for me. But how was it for you once you actually start saying the words and really being in that world? Actually, yeah, you're right. It's a huge difference. When, when you first read it, you feel like it's a completely different language that you are just not ever going to understand. And then once you, I don't know if you do like cliff notes and things here, where you have like the side by side of what the Shakespeare language and then you have the like translation. And then you just said, it's literally what we say every day. It's just slightly more colloquial, like slightly more, sorry, archaic. And we have to make it more colloquial in our understanding. So once I understood it, I was like, it's just me talking as a Londoner. <laughs> just a bit more kind of like fancy, flowery. I think. <laughs> flowery. <laughs> well, I, I have to say, when, when you talk about diversity on television, this show should be at the top of the conversation because I, I was so impressed the first when I saw the pilot. Yeah, let's hear it for that. Um, and, that, and that, I think, is it's kind of a staple of Shonda Rhimes' shows um, because she did it with Grey's Anatomy and she has other roles where she talked about, you know, she's cast the best actor and wasn't really looking at race, but... Talk about what you thought of that when you first stepped into this and realized w what the cast was going to look like and just that, that kind of angle into diversity. Well, because it was Shonda Rhimes, I immediately trusted the process and knew that it was going to be like that. And, I, and I pre I've appreciated her work for many years, so I guess I 
took it for granted at the beginning. So I was like, it's Shonda Rhimes. She's just going to cater for all of us. I'm very excited about it. But then when I realized it was a pre period drama, it's going to be set in the 16th century. The language is going to be archaic. It, it just made me realize how far we've come in the industry so far. We still have a long way to go. But these little examples are changing people's minds and it's changing the face of television and cinema across the world. Shonda Rhimes shows plays across the world. We know in the UK we watch it weekly <laughs> as a, like a habit, like it's just a thing that we do. So um, I, I knew that this was something special and I knew that we were on the way to um, creating something just different and, and unapologetic as well, which I think we should be aiming for, right? Medallion, what, what was your impression when you first joined the cast? I mean, I was so excited. At first, of course, I knew people would be asking questions, you know, being my, my brother Sterling, and there's really no black versus white or anything like that, and that's what I appreciate about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, if you want an explanation, there is an explanation historically and geographically with the area that this could be possible. But I don't think that that's what matters. I think that we're making it possible, and this is how television should be. And it was a great opportunity for women of color to be able to play these, you know, ladies and princesses. And I had a friend who actually cried watching the show because she had never seen another woman of color in regalia, like dressed like that and being, you know, so. I get like emotional thinking about it because we had like such a, yeah, heart to heart about it. Yeah. yeah, I've had conversations with my friends and family as well. And I think it's my family that have reminded me like, do you know what this means? Like, have you seen the reaction on Twitter? Have you seen a reaction from people on the street? Like the Twitter on the night of, of the pilot was like, do you remember people were like, it meant something to their lives. It meant something to, it was almost like a, we were creating a movement. I felt like we were creating something powerful and I feel like the rest of the season will, will carry on as so. And I love that we're talking about it now, but like you said, it's not talked about in the show. It's just a part of the world, and it just kind of looks like our world here today. But yeah. I, I really appreciate that it's, it doesn't become a plot point, which on some shows it is a plot point. It has to be explained, and people have to understand, but I, I love that about it. Yeah, and it's just leading people to the way that it should be, in that hopefully in the next year, five years, 10 years, 50 years, it just won't be a conversation. It will just be the thing. Now, I, I watch a lot of TV, so I usually can like, kind of spot when somebody's on the Paramount lot or the Warner Brothers lot, and I'm watching this and going, okay, that is not in Burbank. Um, so when, when, when did you guys find out you were actually going to Spain and you were actually going to be using this town we as, as the backdrop? We knew from the beginning, I think. But we thought we were going to shoot in Madrid. I think that was the only thing. Oh, uh, yeah. But oh, yeah, we yeah. knew. I th yeah, it was in the, the breakdown, right? yeah. Yeah. But we were just like, is it really going to be shot in Spain? Do we believe They're just that? trying to lure us there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it really was, like, the surrounding kind of more... Arca Evil. Yeah, medieval, yeah. archaic, untouched, beautiful areas um, where we were able to use the cathedrals and cobbled streets. And Spain was like, take down your street lights, that's fine. Like, change the roads, that's fine. Like, they gave us free reign and we were able to use the beautiful backdrop but color it in the way that we wanted to which was fantastic and you just felt right in the world of it from the start yeah, I was gonna say what, what do you think it adds to the show and what did it add to your performances the fact that you were there it helped a lot I mean for performance wise and I think the show is just it's yummy to look at in in general so and the sets you're just it's really amazing yeah, you're in it from the start um so once you get into the makeup trailer you're I mean you arrive just completely bare and then your your hair and makeup's done and you get into these beautiful costumes that are completely handmade for every single character. Like our costume designer and our set designers are incredible and then you reach set and it's like, well, I, I kind of feel like I just need to add to what's here. You've just kind of given me a complete canvas. So it was fantastic in every way. Well, let's talk about the costumes a little bit because they're extravagant, the hair, makeup, everything about this. How, how much time went into all that? Because even the outfits are, are pretty pretty amazing, but how much time would, on a normal day would you have to spend in hair and makeup and in the costume department? I guess sometimes it would vary for you because you sort of, yeah. you're becoming a lady, so it takes a little bit more. But yeah, it was, yeah, it was about like two hours for hair and makeup yeah. and then an hour for costume. 
True, because it's a lot of layers and a lot of lacing corsets. The skirts. Yeah, and that's true. I had like these weird hips. Thing. Oh yeah, the hips, you had my like, hips. Oh yeah, my hips. So. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Oh yeah, you have the hips, and then yeah. like the extra skirt wiring thing. Yeah, I guess like three hours roughly. So like, if on a like a night shoot, I mean, yeah, it was it was a lot, a lot of prep. But like they were so great, everything was so beautiful. If you would have rushed it, if you'd have rushed the detail, then it wouldn't have come out as as exquisite as as it did. And it deserved to be shine in the in the glory that it was. I think. Were, were the outfits comfortable, or did you get used to them as as you went on throughout the season? <laughs> Let's talk truth. <laughs> Let's talk truth. Sure. So um, they're corsets, Jim. Like <laughs> they're a bit like. The questionable, I mean, like, they were fine in the end. You get them on and it's like, actually, I was like saying tighter, like, go tighter, tighter, tighter. Cause the, the, in the beginning, in the you beginning, say that, yeah. Right? And, and then, then like... Ten hours later. You're like, oh, especially those night shoots when it's like 7 a.m. and you're there just not being able to like eat a snack because you feel like you're going gonna to keel over. Um, lunch was fun. Um, I remember, did you have to ever like pull Get your... Get loosened up a little bit so yeah. we could eat. <laughs> One day I didn't, I completely forgot. And then like three bites in, I'd literally, ha, 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 like I thought I was going to die. <laughs> but um, they were beautiful and that was the main thing. I just wanted everyone, every department to shine in the right light. And, and they did. It was worth it. Absolutely worth it. Mm. Okay. Well, let's talk about your characters a little bit. Um, one thing I saw immediately when I started watching the show is these aren't women of those t of the time. In some way, they're very modern women because they have power, they have influence differently than maybe what we'd expect. But talk about that a little bit because they're not just they're not just women who want to get married and just you know have babies. So talk about that though in this world and what that means for the story. Well, I think the creators were determined from the from the beginning to create women, especially characters, but the women especially to not be of the time to be. Women of today that are just placed in the 16th century that have aspirations and are powerful and are outspoken and are unapologetic about who they are and not being scared to show their strength, right? So I kind of just decided to characterize her as anyone else, any other strong character that I had. We've just added galore, <laughs> I think. Um, they. It was beautiful to play because it made me appreciate just how much strength there it, strength there is in women on TV today. So taking an example like Scandal, for example, the Mellies, for example, that are just bold and fierce and are true to themselves and will die for their truth. Um, I think Rosalind's quite like that. She is brash and is she makes funny faces and she is she has well, what would seem a bit of an attitude, but she is going through a lot. She's experienced life. She's um, unhappy with certain situations and she's trying to break down barriers by just simply being who she is. Um, and I think all of the females in the show are represented in that light, right? Yeah, I would have to agree just with the, the they're not like other women in the sense that they're women who are trying to sort of break free from their confines, which whether it be, you know, a princess is technically a position of power. However, as a woman in that time, you're restricted and, you know, you should be worried about what dress you're going to wear today or right. things like that. But and same with you, you know, finding a husband and they're they're not concerned about that. They're they want freedom. They want in, they want to be independent. They want some power at least a little bit you know to to just do what they what they desire mm. and you know they struggle with that a lot so there's the conflict well and isabella has a different kind of power because she's a princess and her brother ends up kind of ruling the land um but w what are her aspirations because i i don't know what goes on beyond this episode but part of me was kind of like I think she could do as good of a job as he's doing. And I don't know if she knows that or she thinks that. What, what, talk about that a little I think she bit. definitely thinks that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I think that it's sort of a, maybe a common thought among people that she could possibly rule more because she doesn't have the emotional baggage that Aeschylus does. And she's not concerned about, you know, love or 
unfortunately, she even puts her friends under the bus a couple times. So it really shows what her, her I, I know, I mean, for the good of Verona, for the good of the people, for the good of the city, and then possibly her own, her own personal agenda to, um, to prove to people that women can be in power. I was just going to say what I love about Isabella is that that in every ruler, in every person that's in a position of power, there's the right-hand man, usually, who is, like, slightly kind of calling the shots, like, slightly saying, you should probably say this, oh, we should probably get this person to write this speech, we should probably... And to have a woman who is going, by the way, Aeschylus, that was a wrong decision, next time do this, is incredible. Today on TV, that's like... I don't know any examples of that, of a person in power who is in who's royalty who has a younger sister speaking up and telling them what to do like it's huge we're break, breaking a complete completely different like barrier here with just even one character on this show let alone the other barriers that we're that we're breaking but your characters are also friends and we see that pretty early on but at that at when the show starts there's i guess you would call it a class difference but it doesn't seem to matter they still are friends and they confide in each other and then I'm, if you want to give any teases like what we'll see moving forward because I'm guessing things are going to get more complicated. Things do. I mean, it doesn't. we don't really explain it in the show. We were supposed to be friends since we, we grew up together because she was part of a noble family and so we've been friends forever. And then, of course, when things changed for her, I wasn't able to speak to her anymore. And um, and so, yeah, I... Yeah, things get get a lot. I don't know. I can't. I don't know what happens. It's weird. It's <laughs> more complicated. Hard to say. <laughs> yeah, like it, yeah, it wasn't a class difference. It's, I I was brought into. I was born as a lady, so like when your whole fam, what well, well, my whole family situation happened, which you will see soon. Wrong. <laughs> um, yes, things get explained ugly. more. I think there's a lot of questions still, and things do get explained in the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, I like good teases. That's good. Yeah. Um, I, I heard through the grapevine that while you were shooting, there was another show that was shooting kind of in the same area. I don't know if anybody's heard of it, but what was the show? I forget um, what it's called. Of um, Ga- Game, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> we were like, mm, <laughs> we're here. <Excuse> me. <laughs> we're still here. So, yeah. Wait, how, how was it to be in kind of a, this kind of smaller town, but knowing that the show was very close to where you were at? It was great. I mean, we we got, yeah, we got to like actually meet some of them, which was cool and and stuff. And they were great and lovely and open. It was funny. Like we were shooting here and then over the hill, they were shooting just there. It's kind of weird. But, um, but yeah, it was fantastic to be sharing the space with them. Inspiring. Very. (laughs) Their show's incredible. So it was a nice little omen for us, actually, I think. Were you, were you, I know the world is usually curious about what they're shooting and what they're doing. Were were you among them where you were like, okay, who's in this scene and what's going on over there? No, I didn't get any of that. Actually. Well, I sort of did because I was like, okay, this character's here and this character's here, but this <laughs> one isn't. So, so they must be over, <laughs> you know, I can't say too much because I, I love the show. So um, yeah, it, it gave away a little bit there. <laughs> oh, actually there were certain characters that just weren't in the area, right? Yeah. So like Amelia Clark was in like saw Amelia Clark. a whole other area. So that must be Poor thing had to stay in her hotel room <laughs> the whole time, apparently. She was just oh, yeah, cause constantly yeah, a lot of attention. people around, yeah. Had to throw that in there because you know. little sure. inside Game scoop of on Game of Thrones. Thrones. <laughs> um, let's talk about Rosaline and um, her her fiance that she doesn't really want to marry, but you know he's he's not bad to look oh, at. Right. He's okay to look at, and, mm. and and of course me knowing the Shonda Shonda shows and just these type of shows and things are definitely going to get more complicated. Is is she going to start actually liking him a little bit more? I won't say love, but l- at least like him a little bit. So they have to get on, one, for the sake of Verona, but two, as you've seen in this episode, with this exclusive, um, you, they are forced to. They're, um, my un- our uncles, actually, force us to do what's best with by kind of blackmailing us, um, kind of giving us what, what, we, what we want, but also telling us that if you don't, there'll be major consequences, which I can't afford to do, because I love my sister so much and I would never do anything to hurt her, and also to leave her as well. Um, so we are forced to get on and we are forced to stay together, meaning in the presence of each other, but not together.
And of course, the, the of course the person making you do this is the man that you are really in love with and would like to be with. I know he's just oh. disgusting. Her brother. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a wicked web. What's wrong with him? <laughs> I know. you yeah, know, such a cute. He wasn't my brother. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> sorry, that if got I could weird, get in reach of him, it would be great. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's terrible. Medallion, what about Isabella? Are we going to see her heart kind of pulled by anybody in the show? She d- she does a little bit. Um, it gets introduced and it's... Um, yeah, there's... A <laughs> <laughs> she gets herself into a sticky situation, which this episode so- sort of sets up um, the next sort of part for her but um i'm sorry i'm so not eloquent right now because it's <laughs> just so there's so much there's so much i know we're trying it's not to give anything away so there is somebody that that does come into the picture a little bit and i know from talking to people on other shonda shows that sometimes the table reads are a blast because that's sometimes when you find stuff out and all that what were what were these table reads like for the show oh, we were always so excited fantastic yeah. um firstly the first one was like me i was just completely blown over by the accents because we've got a lot of Americans. I was down the table like, so who's that? I know I met you earlier today or yesterday, but literally you are a British person right now. <laughs> like this, it was crazy. Um, the acting was crazy. Like it was literally like doing the scenes without the cameras. They were across the table. There was like daggers being thrown at each other. Like, you know, Aeschylus and Benvolio, I was all, ah! like it was all going down without being shot. Um, so yeah, we would have our own scenes happening while we were just doing the table read. Definitely, <laughs> just little like things. I don't know, but yeah. And then we used to, like a couple of us like drew pictures at the end of like illustrations of what happened. Of each other. And most of the time, that. we wouldn't get the scripts until the night before, so we wouldn't have really got a chance to read it if you didn't, you know, get or, the time. So. Or on the day, yeah. Actually, a couple of us. So before. that was usually cold read. Was our table read? Yeah. And it's shot and recorded and people are listening in. So, it's. It, I mean, it would feel like a lot of pressure. It sounds like a lot of pressure, but it was actually a lot of fun each time. We just look forward to seeing the relationships unfold. And what kind of conversations did you have with the writers or the directors as the episodes were going along? Because that's something important to an actor is be able to communicate, whether it's just questions or thoughts. And was that, how did that go on the, on the show? Well, our creators, our um, showrunner, Heather Mitchell, is like our, actually our writer's room in general was just pretty spot on. I think the development of each character was was quite in line with where I thought they were going to go in terms of their character. The storylines like blew me, blow my mind away. But from the beginning, there was a clear direction for everyone. I think we had like sit down talks with our pilot director, Michael Offer, who's absolutely brilliant. Um, and he you know, shed some light and then Heather would sit in and shed some light and I'd say my thoughts because I've had the script for like three plus weeks, like a month. Um, And then usually some of it's set, but then on the day it completely, for me anyway, just like falls out the window and I just want to create something new on the day. Um, But yeah, we we all collaborated, I think, but we all had a similar mindset, so it wasn't wasn't too difficult. Open to anything, yeah. If we're ever like, this doesn't feel right for us, they'd be like, all right, let's try and try something different. Yeah. Definitely. Was there much time for any rehearsal or just running lines? Because once the show gets started, I know it's a machine and it just goes, but sometimes you need that. But did you find that time for yourselves or was, was there time? They made time for rehearsals mostly, so which we appreciate as actors, definitely. Because usually it's just you get to set and you go. Um, after just talking about what kind of eggs you want for breakfast. So it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um... We lived fairly close to each other as well. Everyone was in walking distance. So if I leaned just to like hit up Sterling and be like, can we do those five scenes real quick? Have you got five minutes? It would end up being like a whole hour of rehearsal. But then we'll just like chill afterwards. And so, yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. It's not like being at home where you're like, have you got a spare day? <laughs> we were all next to each other, so it was cool. Yeah, do you think there's an advantage to being on location like you were as opposed to you know, shooting in LA where you all go home and do your, get back to your lives when the cameras stop? Absolutely. Mm, yeah, you create more of a family, I think. A routine. Yes, definitely. And you yeah. stay in the world of it, very much so. And you have so many actors to do your self-tapes with you. Which oh my is gosh, great. yes. <laughs> Free help. It's great. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so moving forward, we don't have to get too spoilery, but who, who should we keep an eye on? Who's going to surprise us, whether it's you two or somebody else that we're, we've already seen in these episodes, where somebody's going to kind of surprise us moving down the line? Man, everyone. 
each person's story just gets more and more rich, I think. True. We kind of go off and do our own. <laughs> we have our own. Everyone, like yeah, everyone has drama. Lot. Yeah. <laughs> everyone has drama, actually. It's just starting to get really juicy, I think. So. Very literally. There's a lot happening. I'm going to just. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, how how were you challenged differently in in your role? Um, Any time in the season, were, did you feel like you were challenged differently than you had been in the past? Yes, actually, the hmm, probably two episodes from now, there's a scene which you you remember when you watch it. It was it hit very close to home. I read it the first time it came through my e email box, and then the table read was very. I had to like suck it in. Then I rehearsed it at home and completely like broke down. This is very, very honest, not told anyone this actually. Um, and then on the day, I couldn't even rehearse the scene. Um, it, I had to just walk out. Did I tell you that? On the, like we rehearsed it, we went to rehearse it. it was just, we were doing a camera rehearsal and I just walked out. I was like, I can't do it. It's too much. It's me, like it's me right now. So, um, I did it in the end and it was great and we had a fantastic director who like like talked to me through it but like there were just emotional things that you connect with and then there were physical things that you connect with like running up hills in shoes like you just saw like that's not normal I don't do that daily like th these are things that you have to train like an athlete for so <laughs> when I read it I was like okay sure going to the gym for the next couple of weeks um but yeah emotionally and physically it's um a lot of things hit home and you're also away from home so you don't have your support network you know you're like best friends to just like give you a hug or whatever so um yeah there were a couple of challenging things medallion how about with you yeah I mean it was it was challenging in terms of wanting to make this world seem as believable and real as possible because we also do add our own little bit like contemporary flair. Um, so that was I just, you know, just making sure that I make the character as interesting and, and complex as possible. And sometimes that was hard. And, you know, in the scenes, in the episodes to come, you'll see she's challenged, definitely. So... That was a fun experience. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I want to see that. When you see it, you'll be like, that's what they were talking yeah. about. Exactly. I know. I'm, I'm going to bug the publicist in the back of the room and say, give me those, give me those episodes. I want to see this. They're like watching know. us. Like, make sure you don't <laughs> say anything. <laughs> don't say that. Um, talk, talk about the language just a little bit more because even though we can say this is Shakespearean, it's, it's not quite as heavy as Shakespeare can be. It is modernized in a way, but... Talk about that a little bit because there is, you could either go really heavy into Shakespeare or something that's a little, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's, it's not as quite as heavy. Watered down Shakespeare a little bit. Like I, wouldn't e I personally wouldn't call it Shakespeare. Um, I'd say that in the pilot there were a couple of lines for Romeo and Juliet specifically that were taken from Shakespeare scripts. And actually there's, is this the episode with the, did something was read, poems on it? Okay, good. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> so that, um, but apart from that, everything else was like slightly archaic. There are even some colloquialisms in there. Like, I think at one point I say anyway, or um, just like ad added touches for, you know, in how we would say it today. Um, but I think to call it Shakespeare, even to challenge Shakespeare and try and write a whole season, in verse or even touches of verse would be a whole other thing. So I'm glad that we went in the direction of, it's understandable, every nation can understand. Um, there are colloquialisms, like I said, but also it's, um, it's archaic and it's classical, I think. Okay. I think part of any show that's on the air right now, social media is a big part of it because you want yes. to engage people and it's definitely a staple of Shonda shows. Um, yes. Talk about that now that the show's aired a couple episodes. You know, that first night it aired, what, were you surprised at the reaction or just what you heard from people or how much you heard from people? Well, I've always been completely confident in the show. I loved the experience. I've, I just knew it was going to be a good show and every department has just pulled everything right, right out um, to the best of their ability. So I wasn't like, I didn't think that the reaction was going to be in any way questioned the reaction on Twitter was it blew my mind a little bit like I said earlier there were people of color who expressed how much it meant to them as a human being not even as a performer as a human being and that touched me a lot um, but people got right into the relationships 
they got right into shipping, which I knew nothing about. I was like, which ship? Where is it sailing? Like, <laughs> I was like, which ship? I actually had to ask, What's, wh who's shipping? What, 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 what is it? And they were like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Like, she doesn't know what a ship is. And I was like, no, I, I seriously don't understand. But they're like putting people together and like wondering who's gonna go with, with who and you know, how it's all gonna work. Um, so it's exciting seeing people try and work it out, I think. I think shipping is a good sign that people are loving the show because they start getting invested and they start thinking about the different things. So it's a very good thing. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of nice fan reactions and the gifts that people Aww. send are so good. Yes. They're so epic. Yes. It's, I, I save them all. Yeah. Like, people think I don't see them. I see every single one. I save them all. It's just the so sassiest yeah. gifts. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're great. Check out hashtag still starcrossed if you want to see some true. funny gifts. That's true. <laughs> Um, we do have a couple audience questions. Thanks for the questions, Great. guys. Um, Michelle has a question. Where's Michelle? Michelle? Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> your name's not Michelle. <laughs> um, which, which, today. <laughs> which, which, upcom which upcoming episode are you excited for fans to see most and why? Is there a particular episode we should be keeping an eye out for? Oh, should I even say? Because... Then you'll what, anticipate it. And you don't have to say what happens. Just tell us which one you're kind of excited Jim. for people. To <laughs> uh, six, I think. I'm excited for episode five. Okay. okay. Five and six. Yeah. Actually, oh, actually, they cut, they do kind of mm, okay. bleed well, into each other. And this this was three, so those will be coming up pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I love it. Yes. Okay, yes. Um, <laughs> question for Victor. My boy Victor in the front. Hello. Um, who were your childhood role models? Did you have any, like either acting or just life models? Childhood. If we're going to early childhood, it was like Ariel from, because she was the queen in my eyes. Um, <laughs> but actual, ch mm, my grandmother, I'd say, she was, yeah, I always like to pick someone very close who is a good shining example of strength and determination and power and owning your power and owning your owning your might. Um, so yeah, I would say her. People in the industry, I think there's just every powerful woman that ever did live, I think, that has shown me great examples of great work across time. How about you, Medallion? Yeah, I'd have to say my mother, um, definitely. She was a working mom and she became a lawyer while I was, I went with her while she was taking the bar and like things like that. So I was really proud of her for that. And um, I don't know, I mean, acting wise, maybe like Julianne Moore, I think she's a great actress and actor. And she, um, and I, I loved Angelina Jolie growing up just because she was also such a philanthropist. And I thought she was like so pretty. And, and she did, you know, action movies, which I also would love to get into. <laughs> So, yeah. And Meryl Streep, just to put that. Well, yeah, of course. Meryl Streep is queen. The yeah. queen. Good. Um, Victor also asked um, about your audition experiences for the show, which I forgot to ask you about. But when you audition for the show, like, how do, how do you audition for a show like this? So, it was pilot season. Were you going up for pilot season as well? Oh, yeah. Around the same time. Um, Pilot season is usually very stressful for actors. Very, especially when you're in the UK and you have to send everything back at a certain time. It's weird. That time difference? Yeah, the time difference is strange. Because you're sending like yourself on tape, like you're sending... Yeah, you're, you're putting yourself on tape. Me at the time was by myself. I did it at 2 a.m. with a very little lighting. Um, probably like the lights under here and just kind of balanced my iPad and tried to make it work. Um, recorded the other lines myself. You're laughing because you know, right? You understand? See? I recorded the other lines I have myself. Never done <laughs> Listen, I gotta do what I, I gotta do. You, <laughs> I recorded the other lines myself on my on an app called Evernote. Um, I left like like I read their lines and I leave the space for me and kind of mime it a little bit so there's enough time in between. And then I would play that back and then press play really quickly and then press record on the iPad and make sure that I'm in the light. Give me anxiety. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling anxiety just talking about it. It was a lot. And all of that at 2 a.m., which was fantastic, after a long day, <laughs> um, after two, two other tapes that week as well. So that was on a Friday, and I got a Skype call with the director the following week. Um, I didn't know it was a Shonda Rhimes show, actually. It was supposed to be a Skype call with Shonda. 
Um, and then I got a call at work from my agent saying, you've got a Skype call with Shonda. And I was like, I only know one Shonda, and I know you're not talking about Shonda Rhyme, so, so who is it? <laughs> and, then, and then he told me. Um, and I broke down, because that's what I do. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I was at work in the toilet. Like, oh my gosh, it's Shonda, what? And they'd be like, okay, I'm like, fine, I'm just getting great news. Um, so I had that Skype call, and that was good, and then got a test offer through. And then um, all this time, I wasn't even going for Rosalind because she wasn't available. And then suddenly the role became available and I just went straight to the casting office the next day, went in again the next day and then got it the following day. But that's un it's not that quick. It was all like probably within three and a bit weeks. Yeah. So you read for, who did you read for originally? Livia. Livia. Yeah. Amazing. For the little sister. I know. Yeah. So it kind of it kind of worked out, I guess. <laughs> what so was your experience like, Medallion? Um, I actually had worked, I had a small uh, reoccurring guest star on Shonda's other show, The Catch. As what? As <laughs> a princess. Sure. <laughs> sure. Princess casting. Zara Al Salim, <laughs> yeah. Arabian Perfect princess. Perfect typecasting, right? Right. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was so fun. Worked on that for, for three episodes. And then I got this in, so I was just like, I, yeah, of course. It's a dream for an actor to make a good impression on an, on people and <laughs> on anyone so um somebody <laughs> <laughs> so that was nice yeah wow not to dwell on the stress of doing that kind of via computer and skype and all those things but it, it, you're not getting that direct reaction are you because when you're in the room and there's casting people right there you can at least i would assume everybody tries to read you know their reaction which sometimes they give you nothing but how tough is that to do it and just send it out there and then not really you're just kind of waiting for an email to come back very tough. The waiting, hey, I don't even, yeah, that's a whole other thing. The waiting as an actor is stressful. And I know some of you in here are probably like, right? Because I do it all the time. It's so stressful. Um, you learn to deal with you it. You learn to yeah. deal with it, but it's still going to be like hard. Always. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I ask a lot of questions in the room. I try and get as much information as I can. And I think I can be quite brazen. Like, okay, cool. So I see it like this. Tell me what you see. Like, wh what does this mean? And then if I'm doing it myself, I feel like I'm not, I don't know, I haven't got as enough decisions under my belt. Um, so I just kind of send it and hope for the best and try not to like pass out with anxiety, <laughs> I think. Okay. All right, um, before we wrap up, I want to ask dream role that you would love to play, either TV, film, stage, is there a role that you just, if you could pick, you would jump into in a heartbeat? I almost don't know if I should say. I wonder if I should like keep it close to my, it would, it's an action role. And it's with a big corporation, like I'm um, a big franchise. Like a okay, running, beating people down, um, with a tight suit on, <laughs> and in a different accent to mine, being very strong and bold. And yes, is, is there a gold? Just is there a golden lasso involved? A golden what? Lasso. Maybe. Okay. So I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Medallion, how about you? Yeah, I just saw Wonder Woman, and, you know, I think that that's kind of a dream role because she's feminist, you know, she kicks ass, um, she doesn't listen to the guy, you know, she just does, does what she wants. But also to do some sort of a bio biopic, biopic of, um, I don't know who. Who? Frida, Frida Kahlo. Kahlo. That would be cool. I have to, yeah. Perfect does that. Something to tell someone's story that I think deserves to be told. You guys, thanks all for being here, and thanks for Thank being you. here to talk about the show. Thank you, this guys. This episode airs Thank Monday night much. on ABC. Thanks. Yay.